Hey guys, this is Alex Perez, Pitbull Talk TV. Um, you might notice by now I'm doing this while I'm driving. Don't try that unless you're me. Um, I ended up plastered on the side of some highway, you don't know why. But anyway, um, I'd like to talk a little bit today about the condition of the sport, the state that the sport is in. I had a recent conversation with a, with a gentleman. Um, he's a respected judge, several different registries, a couple registries, but um, that I know of anyway. But anyway, I had a conversation with him. <clears throat> and one of the things we were talking about are is, is the state of the sport, the state that the sport is in today. And we have a lot of people. I mean, we looked on Facebook, and every five minutes, people are concentrating on fighting BSL. And that's great. That's great. It seems like the, the breed has got so many guardian angels. It's a fantastic thing. And, um, and I applaud you guys for that. I really do. And those people that are hardcore with that, God bless you. But I started thinking, you know who doesn't have any guardian angels? You know who doesn't have any advocates? The sport. The sport has no advocates whatsoever. You look at the top ten today, you've got dogs. We're damn near in September. You've got dogs with 30-some-odd points, 40-some-odd points in the lower top ten. I believe the number one dog has got 100-and-something points. Years ago, 100 and some odd points, they didn't even get you the number 10 spot, much less the number 1 spot. You know, so that that's indicative. But we can say the economy, the economy, the economy, and that's great. But let me tell you something. I'm out here every day. I see people who don't have money spend money on something they want. Okay, so if you want it, you'll find the money. You've got a couple breeders that can't even afford their own mortgage payments, but you'll find them out there every weekend. They're up to here in debt, but you'll find them out there every weekend. Anyway, if you sit back and think about the state of the sport, you can ask yourself, what happened? What happened? The sport has no advocate. We're so worried about the general public and everything when the destruction, the destruction of the American Pit Bull Terrier is coming from within coming from within. It's not coming from out there. Our biggest enemies are in here. These are our biggest battles. We need to win these battles before we can go out there and convince everybody else. We're convincing everybody else what great dogs they are, what great this, what great that. If they go on Facebook and they see us tearing each other apart limb from limb all the time, all the time we're coming at each other where you shouldn't breed this dog, you shouldn't breed that dog, that dog should be shot, that dog should be buried. F you, screw you. It's enough. What happened? What happened? I mean, we're we're at each other's throats all the time. We lost. We've lost the sport. We've lost it. I've got a grand champion. I've got a champion. That's great. We're still going out there and getting these titles, but You're the number four dog, you're the number three dog, you're the number whatever dog, you're the number nine dog. Who did you beat? Who did you beat? Thirty some odd points? You get that in one weekend. One weekend we used to get that. One weekend. My poor lady in red, I racked up thirty some odd points in one weekend. She was in the top ten, I don't know, three months or something like that. You guys might remember three, four months. And then she fell out. And I expected it to, because I wasn't going to keep her there. But what happened? Why Why the low number? You know, and, and, and we can say the economy, we can say this, we can say that, but I say let's look at ourselves first. Let's look at each other first. We're so worried about who's breeding who, so what, and what this and that and the other. I challenge you. I challenge you to spend more time focused on how to fix this, how to fix what we have created. And I say we, because that's all of us collectively. All right? That includes those of us that have started the drama, those of us that fed into the drama, and those of us that have turned a blind eye to the drama. We let it go on 
without checking it. We have. We've let this go on and on. Well, that ain't got nothing to do with me. I'm seeing out of it. For the most part, that's how it should be. It ain't got nothing to do with you. Mind your own business. You know? But don't make it a point to go out there and start stuff. Don't go on somebody's Facebook. Oh, could you believe that she's breeding that piece of crap to that piece of crap? That's going to turn out like garbage. I would never do that. She doesn't know. And I posted this before. Remember back before when we had Bloodlines? When Bloodlines used to be a magazine and not a newsletter? Just to me, that's what it is now, a little newsletter. We saw a breeding we didn't like. What did we do? What did we do? We turned the page and we continued with our own little, our own little merry way. We did our own thing. We just turned a page. We didn't jump on and bad mouth and this and this and that. You know, maybe it was a good thing that back then an hour long conversation would cost you 30 bucks. Maybe it was a good thing. You know, now as technology advances, um, we can facilitate the transfer of information a lot faster than we could back then. But we can also facilitate the transfer of gossip. Gossip and just all the other stuff that goes on and on and on. And we really need to move past that. So I challenge you this. I challenge you to stop worrying about what everybody else is doing and start thinking about how to fix this. How can we fix this? How can we fix this? My opinion, the breed has this many real mentors left. This many. Okay? I'm not saying that none of you are fit to be mentors. Some of you are. You just need to explore that. But who's left to mentor? Who? Got a lot of people that've got some really bad business ethics. You know, you might be able to put two dogs together really well. But man, up here, you're shot when it comes to how to handle customers. Let's face it, your puppy buyer, that's your customer. Whether you like it or not, this is not a business. This is my hobby. I do this. What do you do with your puppies? If you give it away, that's your customer. You are responsible for that puppy for the rest of its life. Always. You're responsible for the rest of the... Listen to me. You're responsible for that puppy and each and every puppy you ever produced for the rest of its life. Legally, we're not obligated. We have a moral obligation. At least I feel a moral obligation. I put the damn dog on this earth. Whatever he does, it's on me. Okay? With that, it's up to me to educate my puppy buyers, my placers, whatever. It's up to me to educate them, talk to them, and I'm not saying pull you into my corner and keep you here. Some of you might say, well, why not? What's wrong with that? There's nothing wrong with that, but I go above and beyond. If you feel that somebody else is going to be a better mentor for you, if you feel that person A or person B, whether they're in Florida, Michigan, California, whatever, if I feel that they can add and help you, I'll do it. I'll put you in touch with that person. Some of you guys have gotten dogs from me. You know this. You know this to be true. I'll help you out any way I can, however I can. I never turn a blind eye from you. I'll call you, whether I'm in my truck. I don't like to talk when I'm home. A lot of kids get to annoy me. But whenever I'm out on the street, which is 75% of my time, I'll call you back. I'll text you. I'll message you. I'll let you know, hey, what's going on? How you doing? And it's not always an agenda. I'm not calling you because I've got another breeding. I'm not calling you because I, I, I want to sell you a puppy. I'm not calling you for anything. So I'll call you and talk about your other dogs. You can call me and ask me, hey, listen, I know you are with this person, but I bought a dog from this other person. You know, it's, it's hard to have a phone conversation with somebody without it eventually turning into their agenda, what they want to do, what breedings they got to come up with. You know, then they're emailing you, they're IMing you, they're, by the way, I bred such and such and such. Great. You haven't talked to me in six months. But you're quick to send an email, hey, I bred this dog to that dog. Okay. And? Let's fix it from the inside out. Let's call each other and say, hey, how you, how you, how are you doing? How are your kids doing? Let's be friends before we get into the dog thing. Dog thing is real brutal. We tear each other apart all the time. You know? But um, 
Let's try and fix it. Come up with some... Let's come up with something, man. Let's figure something out. I mean, we, we gotta do something. You know? We gotta try and fix this. How, I don't know. Let's work on it. Together. Our national numbers are bad. You know? We've got a national president, bless his heart, he's tried his best, you know, and the next person that wants to run has got an agenda in mind. So, I don't know what happened to nationals, I don't know what happened to the sport, as far as the UKC is concerned, I mean, guys, we've killed each other, this is it, this is it, you're going to have the number one dog and you're going to be the only person standing in the ring. Who's left to beat? Won't be a top ten. A year ago, two years ago, there was talks of disbanding the Nationals Club altogether. Was it going to be a national show? Why is that? We're too busy coming at each other. Listen, if this person has a beef with that person, and they call you up and ask you for opinions, that's fine. Don't go on Facebook jumping that person's shit just because you don't like it. That person may have every right in the world to do what they did. But you're going to jump on this gossip train because you don't like that person. So you're feeding crap into this guy's head intentionally because you don't like that person? Come on, man. Grow up. Seriously, grow up. That's, that's little high school, high school stuff. You know, junior high. I'm not going to be your friend if you're his friend. What? I talk to people that don't talk to each other all the time. You know? And I... Why? Why do we have to... Why do we have to choose sides? Why can't we be neutral? Why can't we do that? Why do we have to pick a side? Why is it that if I talk or socialize with this one individual, that person doesn't want to talk to me, or automatically assumes that in their eyes, I'm a douchebag just like this guy or that lady? Why? You don't know me. Call me. Talk to me. Get to know me. Then form your opinion. Anyway, I'm getting to where I need to be. This is Alex, the Bull Talk TV. You guys be good. You guys be safe. God bless you. And uh, until next time.